This is Cornbread's review. Hey, this is Cornbread's review. This is Cornbread's review. Talk about the hottest movies, old dead new. Cinema breakdown, grasping the truth. No acting, I leave that for the cast and the crew. The capture the cool, not theatrical rules. So you better be direct or you have to produce. Something to break in like last minute news and keep quiet when the real boy met in the rules. Woo. Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back for another episode of Cornbread Movie. What? Movie what? Movie review. That's right, man. Hey, I'm Cornbread1016. Make sure you follow me on all platforms. Um, also on TikTok, Cornbread Movie Review. I think that's my TikTok, man. So, so I appreciate all the followers, um, all the views, make all the subscribers too. Make sure y'all like and subscribe if you have not yet. And share this too, man. I told y'all, man. I'm dropping content all the time for y'all. So today we are back with another movie review hot off of the presses. Um, if you're new to the channel, understand I do each movie review in five different categories. All right. That's uh active cinematography, storytelling that I get what I bought. And then is it a must see Add it up, spits out a cornbread number. And then it ranks, you know, my 2023 list, you know, we rolling through it every week starting to stack up, man. So, uh, let's get into it, man. Today we're going to do a movie review and that movie today, ladies and gentlemen is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yes, it is out now. It's in theaters. It is PG-13. Um, it's been some, some, ain't controversy, but is it good or bad or what's going on? But you know, Cornbread got you, man. I got to break everything down. I don't just get y'all opinion. No, I break it down and then it spits out the opinion, right? I'm just me, all right? So first category is acting. Who is in this movie? You got Paul Rudd. Now... Paul Rudd plays Ant-Man. He's been Ant-Man about shit six, six, seven times now in the Marvelverse. <clears throat> um, for me, he's always been a sidekick, man. Um, unfortunately, I think for the first movie, you can get away. You, you got your solo act. Then they're like, all right, how are we gonna spin it? Now we got the Wasp, right? So that was a nice little twist on the second one. Now this is the third movie of him playing Ant-Man by himself, and then. How can we spin it even more? And so they added different characters, okay? To, him being a superhero, I don't think is a bad thing, but it's hard for him to play the tough guy. You know, always saving the world. He's always the jokester. And for Marvel Universe, that is okay. But for diehard superhero fans, everything ain't a joke, man. If life is on the line, we need you to get down. Throw them paws, you know what I'm saying? Scrap up. What up? What, what, what? I need you to do that. Not joke your way out of stuff. So... Um, he's in this movie. Also in this movie, Jonathan Majors, man. I don't know what's up with this dude. This dude ain't got no, he don't sleep. He's everywhere. So he plays the character Kang, um, to get his storyline, I will say go back to Loki season one. That's when you get to understand more about him. Um, and it's the end of, let's say Loki and then it's this part, right? And you get the update of what he's been doing since that Loki saga. He brings validity to the acting category. All right. This dude, he could, he could have a little jokes, but he's serious. He's serious. And if I feel like when he says it, he means it. Marvel does a great job of having top notch villains. And this is another one. I, every time he says something, I say, oh yeah, yeah, he, he real, he, <laughs> he's not playing. So adding him to this movie boosted it up. And when I say boosted it up, I don't mean it's a, it's, it's a good thing. Everything else, not good, not good, not good. The jokes fl fell flat. Nobody stretched out their acting rant. I, I don't know, man. It was very, very, very flat line for me in the acting category. Kang character, save this acting category, I'm sorry. If you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So the acting category gets a 3.5 out of 5. I know. It's like hanging on by a thread. Like, uh, it was almost a 3. But Jonathan, you saved it, man. 3.5 for acting. Next category, we got cinematography. So this movie is about an hour and 58 minutes to two hours. So not bad. It did feel complete. Let me get into the, situ the problems, though. This budget 
was $200 million for this movie. I want to say this. The amount of money or the amount of no money, the lack of money, right, does not excuse the lack of creativity. Let me say that again. You could have 200 million or you could have 2 million. For me, the lack of creativity shouldn't be nowhere in that, that budget, right? Can you do it or not? If you can't do it, you have to be creative and still get your point across. And for this, it felt like they just threw money at this movie to make it look good, and it's gonna be good. And I'm gonna say it, it, it's not. This movie's 90% green screen. Right? I feel like I'm watching Avatar again. Like, I, don't, I don't understand it. And it's not even good green screen, right? Like, um, if you compare it to, it feels like it wanted to be Thor, right? Like, so if you compare it to Thor, Thor was creative with colors that popped, or they took a, stripped away the colors and went black and white, and then certain things that they did brought in the color, right? So that's a way to be creative and still have the 90% green screen. This is very bland, very dark, um, not vibrant colors at all, and not creative in how you shoot it. To me, it was like they were in a house and then they just went to the quantum realm. So it's like they could have did that in their backyard. Another issue I had is this movie felt like I was watching Mad Max and Star Wars combined. They just put them together, spits out this movie right here. But it has nothing to do with Ant-Man, right? So it's like they, they were stretching. It was like no idea was a bad idea. Let's uh, fly in on a stingray. But that's from water. But then we have birds and insects. And then we got, the, it's like they just threw it all a gumbo into this quantum realm to make it feel like, oh, it's, it's out of this world. But in reality, it's not. And then the quantum realm, which they just defined it even more, that the quantum realm is underneath the earth. So you got earth and then it's underneath it, right? So it doesn't have time or space. So it's hard to get to um, compared to the other Marvel, Marvel movies where it's planet hopping or universe hopping, right? The quantum realm is in with earth and underneath it. So I don't know how that works where if earth is destroyed, can you still get to the quantum realm? So I don't know. That's just a question for me to ask y'all. Y'all write in the comments if you like, uh, if you understand what I'm saying, because I don't know. Educate me. So for me, cinematography, I don't care that your budget was 200 million. This movie was not creative. I did not see it in 3D, which I think the 3D might have spiced it up just a little bit, but most of the scenes didn't seem like it was built for 3D. It seems like they produced the movie and they just slapped 3D on top of it. So you don't get a pass from Cornbread, man. So, so t cinematography gets a three, three out of five. I was disappointed in, in the visual and, and just the creativity and watching it, especially how much it costs. So three out of five for me. Next category, storytelling. Storytelling. The movie starts off, um, you have Ant-Man basically takes place after they defeated Thanos. Even though we've had like six movies since then, but the, I guess Marvel does a good job with sticking to those subcategories. If you got your Ant Man's, your Spider Man's, you got your, uh, let's say Loki's, you got your Moon Knight, you got your Black Panthers. Everybody has their own thing going on. So time is kind of weird because in, cause when we're watching it, we're like, okay, we already know these different things happen. Why are you still talking about the Thanos thing when there's six movies in between? But I, hey, I understand it. I'm not saying it, it's just me watching it. It's like, uh, this kind of gets stale because we're still talking about old stuff. But for the Ant-Man and the Wasp universe, it makes sense. So you got Paul Rudd, he's our Ant-Man. He's um, on a campaign tour. He's, he's the famous guy. He has a book out, but people still confuse him as Spider-Man. So I, that doesn't make sense to me. If he has a book out, he's saying who he is and what he's done, and he's famous because of the book, but then people call him Spider-Man, doesn't add up. Also, another thing from the trailer, it feels like if you've seen the trailer, you've seen this movie. So there's nothing that happened where you're like, oh, I was surprised, or I didn't see that coming. It was very predictable in what was happening. So you get all the main characters in Ant-Man and the Wasp in an area. They send a signal down to the quantum realm. This is all in the trailer, so I'm not telling you even the movie, <laughs> even though it happened in the movie sends a signal, and then they get sucked into the quantum realm. Couple major issues with just that scene right there. First off, there's a, 
uh, uh, radio blast that just happens in their room. Nobody has a suit on or anything. And they get hit with this, but then everybody's fine. Uh, when, when does that happen? When does Marvel, come on, man. We got, you got the, all the old viewers watching the same thing. Come on, man. We understand. Like, don't lie to us. We've seen how this thing's happen and how do they just are fine. Okay, cool. You say they're fine. Then these individuals get sucked into the quantum realm with no suit, no nothing. Remember, the whole Avengers had to wear specific suits so that they don't die. <laughs> and remember, it changes time. So all this other stuff, it's like we never watched any movie before, before we watched this with the quantum realm. I, I had an issue with that. Another issue I had, which is going to discuss later, is these main characters weren't prepared to go down to the quantum realm and go to war, right? So they had unlimited coins to make stuff small, make stuff big. They didn't have to recharge. They didn't have to do nothing. It's like they had everything they needed. They didn't have to go home, get no extra book bag, no nothing. So it didn't make sense. Didn't make sense at all. Like, come on, man. These were not stupid viewers. Treat us as such. All right? Yeah, people just went straight raw in the quantum realm, and it's like nobody cares. Like, no, that's I'm not going to let you pass for that. So they get down there. Things are happening. Uh, you get the little origin, not origin story of Kang, but you get to see how he got to that point and then what he's done since then, right? <clears throat> so he's the man with Kang. He wants to be the number one in all universes. So if you've seen the uh, the one Jet Li, if you've seen that movie, you kind of understand Kang's story where there's a Kang in every multiverse, so he wants to be the only one. So he goes to a different multiverse and kills really Kang and the universe so he can be the only one. Okay, that's his premise of why he got abolished to the quantum realm and how he's trying to get out. So there's something that happens where Kang cannot leave. All right, that's why he needs, let's say, Ant-Man and the Wasp to help him do something. And then he'll use that to get out. I'm not going to tell you why because I, you know, I still want y'all to see it. I'm not going to tell you what he what he needs and what he needs them to do. All right? So they do it. <laughs> they do it damn near an hour in. <laughs> now what? That was a whole hour of he needed something. And now it's like he ain't taking, he's taking his time. Could because it could be due to his arrogance, cockiness. I don't know what it is. Or it could just be bad writing. He just like it's like all right thank you and then he doesn't leave which i had an issue with but kang's story i'm glad he got added to this storyline but they just had to it's like he could have did better in other movies i'm sorry to say that even though it makes sense for ant-man and the wasp because they had to they got their own own section with uh you know the quantum realm kind of like how black panther got their whole vibranium so they got their own little genre over here i understand it but he could, he, his storyline could have did better in other movies, man. So for me, storytelling is going to get a 2.5 out of 5. It didn't make sense for the other movies. And even if it did, let's say this was Ant-Man and the Wasp number one, and this is the third movie. The stuff that was happening still didn't make sense. So we have an issue with that. All right, 2.5 out of 5 storytelling. Hey, we got to do better. We got to do better, man. Next category, did I get what I bought? This movie is PG-13. It is a superhero movie. Um, like I said, it is uh, 3D, but I didn't see it in 3D. So standard ticket, $10 to $15. Watching this, like I said, I'm not mad that I watched it. I just had higher expectations for this. Now, you're going to get a lot of uh, Ant-Man, a lot of Wasp. You get his daughter. Maybe she doing some stuff, too. I don't know. We, Like I said, I ain't going to tell you everything. And you get Kang. So... Me watching the trailer and going to see this movie, I got everything that I was looking for. Everybody had adequate screen time. Um, I wish I would have got more of Kang's character, but he was limited because of the situation he was in. But it's not like I watched the whole movie, then you only saw two seconds of Kang. No, you get to see everybody. Um, so I was happy that you got me in the seat and I watched it and you didn't lie to me. I just wish it was better. You're going to get a lot of things getting shrunk, a lot of things getting bigger. I didn't even know you could shrink smaller and smaller, but like, if you're going to introduce new stuff to us, <laughs> introduce it and then do it. You know, don't just, I'm just watching it happen. Like, what, when, when did this happen? When, when can, ah, uh, hey, hey, I'm, I'm just here so I won't get fined. 
And then where is T.I., man? Where? T.I., come on, man. I don't, I don't know. I'm just being, facetious, being funny, man. Where is T.I. at? I, don't, I miss his character, too. Um, you know, where he used to be a bank robber and all this other stuff. So um, for me, did I get what I bought? I'm going to say a four out of five. I, I, what got me in the seat, I got to watch. All right? So they didn't lie to me um, with the trailer. It's cool. But all the other categories, mm -mm, no bueno. Last category, is it a must-see? So this is a Marvel movie. It's still on the timeline of phase four. I'm going to say the gig is up, bro. <laughs> the gig is up, Marvel and Ant-Man. Come on, bro. You got three movies. I, I don't need to see a four. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got away. You're a great sidekick. You're a great addition. You're a great side dish. And don't take that as disrespect. That is just how I feel. But you... Um, stepping up in danger, being the, the, the sole body to stop freedom and, and save Earth, you're not it. I, I, I can't see it. Um, I don't think it's because, it could be because of Paul Rudd's character or could it be because of Ant-Man. I don't know which one, how I feel, but I feel the same about both of them. Um, so for me, I, I don't feel like they should make another movie. He should always be in addition to Marvel always does a great job on adding new characters and adding villains, so uh, keep that going. Um, they even added more villains um, from the Marvel Universe, which I thought was pretty cool. And they brought back old characters to play those uh, villains. Um, also, it's two end credits. Once again, it's two end credits, so make sure you watch both of them because they are pivotal to the future movies, um, especially with Loki um, coming out on Disney uh, Plus as well. So two end credits. Is it a must-see? I'm going to say you can wait and watch this, uh, even though I understand it might be difficult. But for me, it's, it's a must-see. It's going to be a three out of five. I, you can wait to watch this. It's, you're, you're not missing anything. So overall, Cornbread Movie Review. This movie receives Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania receives a three out of five. From Cornbread, yes, three out of five. Make sure you check out my 2023 movies. Now, this is the part where it's a forgotten movie. It's a movie that you forgot about, you never heard of, or you definitely need to double back and watch, okay? So let's play Guess the Movie. <clears throat> this movie came out in 2002. And you have a young man, a high schooler, portraying a doctor, <laughs> a lawyer, um, what else did he do? He's writing bad checks. I, hey, I'm giving y'all this movie away, man. Y'all should definitely know what movie this is, but tell me what movie it is. All right? Yes. 2002, young high schooler playing all these people that he's not and writing bad checks and, and on the run. Come on, man. I'm damn near giving y'all the movie, man. You ready? Time's up. The movie is Catch Me If You Can. Leonardo DiCaprio, Tom Hanks. There's a lot of heavy hitters in this movie too, low key. If you have not seen this, make sure you check it out. I don't know if it's streaming or not, but Redbox it or, you know, uh, y'all know how to find these movies, Hulu it or whatever. So make sure you go check out Catch Me If You Can, check out Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, and then check out Cornbread Movie Review. All right, I'll be back next week. Holla at your boy. Peace.